Welcome back to another video of Your Daily Scales. Now, basically, this is a series where I teach how to play uh, basically all of the scales on the piano, all the major scales for a beginning piano student. And so basically, that's what this series is. And it's also a bit of a companion series because I'm going to be teaching some really simple classical music in the future as well. And if that classical piece happens to be in one of these major keys, I'll say to come back if you don't already know how to play this major key and you don't already know the scale very well, to come back and watch one of these videos and practice on the major scale that is in that key. And so that's kind of what these videos are used for. And basically, in every video, I teach you a different scale. So let's take a look at what today's scale is. So the scale we're going to be talking about today is E major. And as you can see here, E major has four sharps. We have F sharp, C sharp, D sharp, and the new one is going to be D sharp. So don't forget to play that when you're playing the scale, or otherwise you're going to be playing in A major instead. So to play E major is actually quite simple. We start off here in the right hand with a thumb on E, and it actually uses the same fingering that the other four scales I've reviewed so far on this channel have. It uses the same fingering as C major, G major, D major, and A major. It's just that you're playing a different note and you're playing a different scale, but the fingering pattern is actually exactly the same. So if you haven't gone and seen those videos and you're just starting off with piano, and this is like one of the first videos you're watching about scales, you really should go back and watch um, one of the other videos that I've already done, preferably start off with C major and then work your way up here to E major. Because that way there you can get a whole bunch more information and I explain the C major scale really, really simply, really, really easily, really slowly so that anyone can learn how to play it. So to play E major, like I said, we start off here on E and then we head right up here to G. But of course we have F sharp and G sharp to worry about. And then once we get up here to E, uh, G sharp, we're going to want our, to cross our thumb under our middle finger, which is going to be on G. That's why it has a three under it. And then once we get here to A, we're going to want to head up to E. But we're also going to want to remember to play this as a C sharp and play this as a D sharp. Once we get up here to E, we're going to want to head right back down. Once we get back down to A, we're going to want to cross our middle finger over to G sharp and then head back home to E. Again, remembering to play G sharp and F sharp as well as the D sharp and C sharp. Now the, right, the left hand here is also quite simple. The first five notes are really straightforward. We start off here with E and we head right up here to B, just all in that order, five, four, three, two, one, again remembering to play F sharp and G sharp. Once we get here to B, we're gonna to wanna to cross our middle finger over our thumb to get to C sharp, and then from here we're gonna to wanna to head up to E, which we land on with our thumb, and then from there we head right back down to this C sharp. Once we get to the C sharp, which we land on with our middle finger, we then cross our thumb under to get to B, and then from B we head right back down home to E. So let me show you how E major works on the piano keyboard. Now, of course, we would start on E, and basically what's going to be different about E major since the last one we worked on, which was A major, is we have an additional sharp. We now have a D sharp that has been added into the scale. So that's going to be something additional for you to make sure to remember, because if you don't play that D sharp, then you won't be playing an E major and it won't sound the same. So to play E major, basically we'd want to start, of course, on E. And then basically the fingering for E major has been the same as the fingering pattern for all of the previous scales we've already done. So we'd start with our thumb in the right hand on E. We'd head up to C sharp, uh, G sharp. We'd tuck our thumb under. Then we'd head up to E. Remember that D sharp. Then we'd head back down, again, remember th remembering the D sharp. Cross our middle finger over, and then we're home on E. Now to play the left hand, as I said, the left hand pattern has been the same for the major scales up until this point. So what we do is we start with our pinky on E, and then we will head up to B. Then we will cross our middle finger over to C sharp, remember the D sharp with our second finger, and then we're on E, and then we head back down, tuck our thumb under, and then head home to E. So that's how each hand of the major scale works. So now let me get the metronome out and I will play it for you five times through. Second time. Fourth time. Fifth time.
that's how practicing on the E major scale works. Now, whatever speed that you find is comfortable to play, whether 76 is the right speed or it's too fast or it's too slow, whatever the right speed is for you, that's what speed you should practice on with the metronome for E major. Just play it at a nice steady speed that is comfortable for you and it's always a great idea to practice it with the metronome. Uh, it's just the metronome just somehow magically helps. It's pretty wild. So when you're practicing, once you find a speed that's comfortable and you become very good at playing the E major scale at that speed, then you'd probably want to slowly start bumping up the speed uh, maybe one beat per minute each time or mine won't let me do one so you, that would be like about four beats per minute each click of the metronome so you just want to increase the metronome speed every time or every five times you play the scale through to just slowly build your dexterity and ability to play the scale quickly. So now let's talk about how to play the contrary motion of the scale. And if you already know how to play the right hand of the scale, which you should be able to do by now, then you should, you're should you going to be really good at playing the right hand of contrary motion as well, because the right hand for both parallel and contrary motion is exactly the same. We've already talked about parallel is where the hands move together in the same direction. Contrary motion is where the hands move in opposite directions. And it sounds a lot different from playing in parallel, but one thing that's really convenient is the same finger on each hand is actually playing at the same time. As you can see, we're both playing a two here, we're both playing a three here, and we're both playing on a thumb here. So that's kind of cool. They're playing on different notes, but the same finger is actually playing in each hand, which makes it a little bit easier. So since we already talked about the right hand, I'm going to skip the right hand for contrary motion, and I'm going to go right down here to the left hand, because that's where it's all different. We actually start here on E, the high E instead, with the one we ended up on at the top of here is when we start off here and we work our way down to the bottom and head back up again. So we play E with our thumb and then we head back down to C sharp. And then once we get on C sharp, we tuck our thumb under to get to B. And then we, from B, we head right back down to E, just like that, one, two, three, four, five. Again, remembering to play the G sharp and the F sharp. Once we get down here with our pinky on E, we head right up back to B playing F sharp and G sharp again. And then once we get to B with our thumb, we cross our middle finger over to C sharp, and then we go on to D and E. So now let me show you how contrary motion works on the piano on the keyboard. So as I already said, the right hand of it is exactly the same as the parallel motion, which we've been doing. So I'm not even going to talk about that. We've already discussed it. But what I am going to tell you, show you how to do is the left hand, because that is actually completely different in a way. You're basically, instead of starting at the bottom of the scale going up and coming down, you're starting at the top going down and then coming up. So it's the same notes, but it does have a different feel. So I just wanted to show you how it works. So we start with our thumb on E. Then we play D sharp, we play C sharp, tuck our thumb under to B, we head down to E, head back up to B, cross our middle finger over, and then go to E. So it's really quite simple, but yet at the same time, it does have a completely different feel, particularly when you get both hands in it together. So let me show you how that sounds like with the metronome. Second time through. Third time through. Fourth time through. Fifth time through. So that's how applying the contrary motion for E major works. And basically, it's just kind of another exercise you can do. You can help develop independence between your hands, because instead of them kind of being tied together, playing the exact same notes at the exact same time and moving in the exact same direction, they're playing different notes at different times, playing in opposite directions, which is kind of just, an, just another way of practicing the E major scale. Same notes, same everything, but just playing in opposite directions has a much different sound and feel. One further thing I wanted to discuss about the E major scale is its relative minor. And basically, the minor scale, there's two ways to find the relative minor of any major scale you're working with. So the first way that I like is where you find the root of the key working in, which in this case is E. It's the key we're in, it's the, the scale we're playing. So basically, you'd want to follow the E major scale until you come to the sixth note. So E major is the first note. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six. So C sharp is the sixth note of E major, and that means that C sharp minor is the relative minor of E major. So if we were to play C sharp minor, starting on C sharp, of course, we would have the C sharp minor scale. So that is the sound of the C sharp minor. And you might have noticed that it actually has the same exact notes as E major. We're just starting it on a different note. And that is how the minor scale works. It's the same as the E major scale. It's got both F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp in it. But instead, you're starting it on C sharp. So it has a much different sound and also a different feel. So that's just another thing that you can practice on with the E major scale. It's a good idea to always practice the relative minor of the scale you're working or to, that you're practicing on along with the major scale that you're actually working with. It's a good idea to just practice the two together so you relate them and that you understand both the major and the minor scales. Hopefully you found this video on the daily scales to be uh, informative and helpful for you, whether you're a beginning piano student or someone who knows a little bit about how to play music and they want to become better at what they do. Scales are really helpful for all of that. It doesn't really matter what type of music you want to play or what you know what you want to do with your musical skills whether you just want to learn more classical pieces and play them or compose brand new music of your own or improvise and do play solos playing scales and knowing music theory like that really helps you do all of that and so if you're watching these videos and learning and practicing on your scales every day it's a really great help so hopefully you found this video uh, informative and helpful like I said if you want you can go check out the rest of the video series and also if you want to subscribe and hit that button up there on the right hand side of the screen make sure to do that because I'm going to have lots of cool uh, videos of really simple classical music from some of these awesome books here from the 1800s. So if that sounds cool and you want to learn how to play some really fun, simple Bach pieces, make sure to stay tuned. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.